Video four, the hot spots procedure, imaginal exposure. Remember, we only work on one hot spot in each session. After we determine the beginning and the end of the hot spot we select, we can begin the imaginal exposure. Ask your patient to repeat the hot spot without pause between repetitions and to recount as many details as possible. Help your patient focus on the feelings, thoughts, senses, all the stimuli. This is the time for the therapist to ask probing questions to get all of the details. We want to dig deep into this slice of the trauma. Prior to this, I had advised if your patient seems to be doing well with the exposure, get out of their way. Just let them talk if they're doing fine. Now is the time to ask the probing questions to really get at every aspect of this memory. Have the patient describe every bit of relevant stimuli, every thought, every response, the fears. Examples for childhood sexual abuse, ask for details, including how big are you? How big is he? If it's a combat trauma, describe every detail. For example, tell me exactly what position you were in. I remember one example of a patient, and as we were working on the hot spot, he had felt very guilty that two of his men had died, and it was, he felt, his responsibility since he was the commanding officer. And in going through the detail, he said that, let's say, Jones had been shot right away by a sniper. And even though he told Smith not to go out, Smith went to try to help Jones, and then Smith was picked off. He was shot immediately. And my patient wanted to go and help them, but he knew at this point now that there were two snipers and they were firing from different directions, and he was covered, and that if he had gone out in any direction, that he would have been shot. And by going over it and over it, he realized that there was nothing he could do that he had told Smith not to go out, and he had, and he had gotten shot. And even though he wanted to go and try to help, that it would have just meant he would have been shot too. And as hard as that is, it does finally help relieve some of the guilt that there was something he should have done that he didn't do. In processing, when patients are struggling, especially with feeling guilty or blaming themselves, or I wish I had done this, Once we've gone through it a lot, and I feel like I pretty much know the answer, I will ask them, why didn't you? And then they can go through it in detail. And for example, the soldier in combat can say, because I would have been killed too. And part of me realized that. And as sad as that is, it does help relieve some of the guilt. Focus on the patient's hot spots until each one has been sufficiently processed. Don't get impatient and move on to another trauma memory until there's a sufficient reduction of anxiety and distress in the first memory. The processing is where issues of guilt and blame and I wish I would have, etc. can really be discussed and worked on. We often refer to it as wearing it out, wearing out the memory, and you really want to wear it out before moving on to the next hotspot. This may take several sessions, depending on the number of hotspots, the patient's pace, the amount of time he spends listening to exposure recordings, his homework, and the intensity of the trauma, how avoidant it is, all of this. Allow it to take the time that it takes. Just like we ask patients, can they be patient with themselves that it's a process and give themselves the time and space it takes? Therapists need to be patient as well. Sometimes a patient will give low SUDS ratings and they might appear minimally distressed, even when focusing on a very distressing part of the memory. Usually this is due to under-engagement in the trauma memory. In these cases, focusing in on the hot spot and asking the patient to describe this focus portion of the event in detail may increase the engagement in the SUDS, allowing finally for a reduction of the SUDS to occur. Focus on the hot spots until the final session when you're going to ask the patient to put the whole memory back together to recount the entire memory again. When the anxiety associated with the hot spots has sufficiently reduced, then the hot spots work is completed. You're going to have the patient return to focusing on and recounting the entire memory again, putting it all back together. Like my patient who said it was like playing a long playing record 
and those parts didn't skip anymore. The key points from this video that will focus on only one hotspot per session, starting with the most difficult. We'll instruct the patient that he or she will recount that hotspot repeatedly without pause. This is the time for the therapist to ask probing questions to get all of the details. We want to dig deep into this slice of the trauma and continue to work on hotspots in all sessions until the final session and ask the patient to recount the entire memory again in the final session. 